Every journey gets us closer to the same truth. We all need connection. You are watching In Conversation This Week with Michal O'Hurley. This is Michal O'Hurley reporting for Diplomacy in Ireland, the European Diplomat. I'm here with Mr. Abazovich, who is the Deputy Prime Minister of Montenegro. Deputy Prime Minister, what brings you to this conference in particular? I think that this is, for the last two days, the center of the global politics and uh, um, for Montenegro, which is a small country, but in complicated part of the world in Western Balkan, it's very important to be here and to uh, share some opinions about uh, Mm, our foreign policy and our strategy for the future. So this was a good opportunity uh, to just explain our current situation in context of uh, Russia-Ukraine war, but also to uh, make a contact about some future development in our country, especially in concept of economy. Excellency, clarify for us, if you will, what is Montenegro's position vis-a-vis the war in Ukraine? Montenegro is strongly against the invasion of Russia Federation in Ukraine. We strongly support Ukrainian people, also Ukrainian territorial integrity. We in Balkan very know very well knows what doesn't mean invasion wars, and we will always be against in another side, inside of the peace, inside of democracy, inside the dialogue, inside of uh, protecting of human rights, protecting of human lives in these uh, concrete, concrete cases. And uh, we will support our EU and NATO partners um, with all our capacity. We make the sanction against uh, Russia, Russia Federation. Um, also, we will follow the Russian tycoons if they decide to come to Montenegro or if they have some properties in, in the Montenegro. So we are 100% trust partner of the Western part of the world because this is the very critical moment for everybody. Uh, we don't have nothing against the Russian people. Also supporting the Russian people who are victims of open political elites and who are also against the, this kind of, 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 of war activities in Ukraine. But uh, our mission is to, 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 to stay with universal values. This is the world what we want to promote in the future and Montenegro, it doesn't matter that we are a small country, will always be in the right side of the history. Excellency, Montenegro has come a long way in the past 30 years. Your efforts at reform, both political and economic, have pushed Montenegro to a forward-leaning posture. What does the future hold for Montenegro in terms of uh, policy, relations with its neighbors, and your economy? Yes, we're getting independence in 2006. After that, uh, our very important uh, moment was uh, full membership in NATO. That's happened in 2017. And now we have one more very important foreign policy goal to be in full membership of EU. Uh, we are the front runners in the region, but uh, also have a lot of things to do in our, in our country, a lot of reforms. So I think that we need to push. The new generation of politicians need to push reforms to fight more stronger against organized crime and corruption, to fight uh, against nepotism, against many deviations, what we have from, from, from the past, and to create one very peaceful society which will uh, promote the best neighborhood uh, relation with everybody. We want to just uh, send the positive message of the, of the region to be symbol of the country which try to motivate also another country in the region to be more successful in the European integration and to make one, uh, one uh, let's say, uh, good starting point for the uh, economical development of the, that part of the Europe. Uh, at least um, Montenegro 
um, have possibility to uh, be very successful also in the in the improving of living standard of uh, of, of of our our population. I am pretty optimistic for the future, but uh, we need to, 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 to be more faster in, 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 in some reforms. We cannot spend time anymore in some, let's say, bad things like nationalism, like internal fighting, uh, political, political debates. We need to, 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 to push forward and to promote some kind of uh, new political approach in our country and also in the region. I think that Montenegro can play this role and uh, I am pretty optimistic about our future. Your Excellency, my last question to you is this. You come from a very complicated part of the world, uh, multiple language, cultures. Um, the history is rich, if not diverse, with conflicts. What lessons do you think can be learned by countries who did not fully embrace reform and what that has meant to security, peace, and stability in the region. You are fully right that uh, our history, but also in our, our, our present time, it's uh, pretty complicated. But people, and especially political elites, make things complicated. In the, in the end of the day, things are very simple. We just need to choose and to make the right, right decision. Right decision is to... Uh, to just uh, uh, have a step with uh, with uh, uh, contemporary societies, with uh, uh, democratic societies. This is this is our role. Uh, nobody will take our identity. We should not fight for our identity like 20 years 20 years ago. Today we need to understand that only if you have good ideas, if you have a successful, peaceful society, that makes also your identity more visible and that makes people more proud. So I think that our focus should be on positive things in the future and uh, lessen what Western Balkan countries can, can just uh, give to another part of the Europe, but also in the world is don't make our mistakes. Don't make our mistakes. Don't try it with the war, with the nationalism, with the conflicts, with the fascism to, to come to some goals. Because in the end of the day, everybody will lose. Try differently. Try with with peaceful way, with with dialogue. Try with with uh, respecting each other. This is the lesson what Balkan can share with Western Balkan can share with with, with our uh, partnership countries, but also on countries who are who are um, geographically very far from our reach. Excellency, you're you're known as a a dynamic, a forward thinking leader. Is the nation as solidly behind you? and solidly behind reforms to see its future in Europe? Or is that a continued political task? I think, I think it is. I think that it's the right time to understand that uh, only with, with, with uh, some reforms and only if we all together push to the right things, we can come to the, to the common goal. I am more than sure that... Uh, people in Montenegro starting to understand that they cannot live in the past. Nobody can live in the past. We should live past in the in the in the past, in the book, in the in the history and uh, move forward for, for some for some better future. This is Miholo Hurley reporting from the Antalya Diplomacy Forum. We've been speaking with the Deputy Prime Minister of Montenegro, one of the leaders of the future of Europe, young, dynamic and a country that is coming into its own while preserving its identity and will soon be part of the European Union and fully a part of NATO and a regional player that exercises influence above its size. Thank you, Deputy Prime Minister. Thank you very much and all the best.
300 million years ago, there was no Africa, Asia, Americas, or Europe. Just one big supercontinent. Pangaea. And today, there is still a force connecting those divided by distance. Reversing millions of years of rifting. Making far feel close. Bringing there to here. Turkish Airlines.